back to TC911 Beyond the Call podcast. This is episode 11. I am your host, Abby Dudek, the communications coordinator here at Tarrant County 911 District. And today I have the great, fun, awesome pleasure to talk to GIS director Philip Roar. I knew I was going to do this. Roar. Roar. Bow. Perfect. Bow. Perfect. There we go. That makes it a little bit more educational, doesn't it? <laughs> it that does. way everybody knows how to say, say your it. last name. It's not easy. That is excellent. Well, thank you so much. I know that you're a busy guy in the GIS department, and I wanted to thank you first off for joining me to be on my podcast. It is my pleasure to be here. All thank right. You. So, director of GIS. Now, I knew that you didn't come in as director of GIS. Philip, how long have you been with Tarrant County 911 District? I have been with the district for 25 years. Oh, my. Came in. When in you were 12, right? Just about. <laughs> I just turned 13. Um, One. Actually, in contract as. To 97 and started full time in December of 98. Okay. Good and times. came in as a contractor doing JS technician work. Oh, I excellent. I have worked my way up through the ranks, if you will, to now being fortunate to be tabbed with the director position. All right. And so you went to school with. Uh, for GI, for G, just in case anybody out there doesn't know, geograph, geographic, no, ge- ge- geographic information, information system. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. I got it was that. still a budding um, academic discipline at the time, so there weren't a whole lot of options available beyond classes. Mm-hmm. Um, so I actually had a degree in political science and a minor in geography. So where oh, I was okay. headed was still that direction with a, a very slant towards political geography and boundaries and things like that so it actually was a much more seamless natural transition than it might sound sure yeah it doesn't sound like you just kind of merged in lanes Mm. that's exactly because i know your passion for your alma mater would you like to share with the folks at home where you proudly carry your degree from i graduated in uh, 1993 from texas a&m Yes, there you go. Good job. And I, I hide it immensely. <laughs> yeah, none of us know that at no, all. Can't tell by looking you know, at me. Not your personalized plates, nothing, nothing. like that at all. This nope. it's a complete secret. I'm just psychic, <laughs> so I didn't know I carried this gift until I started working here at the district. But hey, you know what? I'll take it. Absolutely. So that's great. So you have been here literally probably, well, I mean, this is the beginning of your career. That You know, you started 25 years ago. It was actually my second job. Yeah. What was your first job? Uh, I was working for a law firm in San Antonio doing delinquent property tax collection, which is actually where I learned about the formal, um, more GIS aspects. Oh, because the properties. Doing oh. property research, I ended up talking to the GIS manager at the Bear County Appraisal District. Okay. And it, I, I'm not sure, light bulbs started going off and connections were being made. and. Um, I very quickly discovered that that was an avenue I wanted to go. Great. So when you started here at the district, what was your, like, what did you start in as, well, you started as a new kid, obviously. Yes. 25 years ago. 25 years ago. Wow. Uh, Good job, Philip. Thanks. That's impressive. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I really have to put the emotion Mm -hmm. on there. Um, And then, so what's. What is some of the things that obviously we don't do now? Because just like anything, GIS technology changes just as much as all the other technology because we do all the maps. Right. So what was it like when you first started here versus today? <laughs> um, in some aspects, it's it's very much the same. Since yeah. our focus was in on uh, streets, street names, boundaries, uh, specific addresses, uh, what might have migrate a little bit is our focus on individual addresses address points rather than ranges so it, it was kind of more of a, a map go i mean it just it was more like a map book approach early on and now we are very centric on specific addresses those locations um again verifying boundaries and things like that so the software is we're still with the same software vendor but some of the internal structure files are different sure um but beyond that it's it's ever evolving but all in the same breath it's there's a lot of similarity Mm -hmm. from the day i started 
So, so explain to um, everyone at home, GIS, what is this GIS department and mm-hmm. how does that play into our assisting the 911 centers, or, it's, or we call them PSAPs, public safety answering points. How, does, how do you guys function in this big, uh, how do you guys play in this big game that we have? <laughs> Excuse me. It is very much a, it's a little bit of a duplicative amount of work, effort of work that we do, a lot of what the cities do. Uh, the cities assign addresses, new neighborhoods, street names, uh, but we then incorporate all of that. We do our own GPS field data collection when necessary or work with the cities. And it's just to get a an overall ubiquitous street centerline address layers that our uh, Peace apps can use for the 911 call location so i know that and i know this is a big thing so that we can put it out there on podcast land you know exactly what i'm gonna say sure your 911 address and your (laughs) your, and your and it's okay it's been a big thing i'm just gonna be transparent so we we don't here at the district at least phillips team are not responsible for that you want to go into this, you know where I'm going with it, the 91 address versus the mailing address, and then also like who's responsible for putting that in. Because we just get it from the city. We're not, we don't take it directly from the citizens. Right. So if you want to elaborate on that, on what you would like to communicate about that, because I know that's kind of been um, something that we're wanting to continue to educate folks about. Right, it, it's, I'll, I'll say it's been a little challenging, um, but yes, there are differences in, in addresses. You've got your physical property address, uh, your mailing address, which can often have a different city name based on who provides your mail. Uh, that mailing address has little bearing on your actual physical address. And then we had, somewhere along the lines, um, someone caught wind and developed a term called a 911 address. And unfortunately, I think that just really further confuses the situation mm-hmm. because it sounds like a different address. Well, yeah, we, we're here at 2600 Airport Freeway, but our 911 address is something else? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's 2600 Airport Freeway. So whatever the addressing authority assigns your address to be is your 911 address. When the city assigns it, they send notification to utilities, the USPS, and uh, us and a number of other people. So we're, we're told from the cities what your address is at the time that it's assigned. So there's nothing additional, no um, no additional forms, no legwork, nothing has to really be brought to us for that. And it's really as far as we're concerned that there's no such thing as a 911 address. Mm-hmm. It, it is what your assigned property address is. So let me ask you this. So um, one of my residents, I was up in North Fort Worth and sometimes it was tagged as a Keller and sometimes it was tagged as Fort Worth. But my, obviously my utility, my utilities like water and trash were Fort Worth. So how does that come into play without, with you know, cause I'm sure there's a lot of folks out there that have that same thing who are on those borders, um, especially like, like the zip code I was was 76244. That's and a lot of them can be- Where I live, I live as well. And yeah. it, it does get confusing, but that is one thing. Again, the property address, who you pay your taxes to. Now we do pay them to Keller ISD, but we pay them to the city of Fort Worth. So another nice easy reference is the water bill, uh, trash. What is on the side of the trash cart when you roll it to the curb? Yeah, there you go. Stamped with City of Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. So we just try to find little easy markers for people to reference because it is very confusing. Oh, absolutely it is. Yeah, we we don't discount that at all. It it really is. And even when I moved in, um, the closing office said, yes, your address is this. And you can use either Fort Worth or Keller. I'm like, well, that's just confusing. <laughs> yeah, with this, with, because I want to, you know, you know, one day you feel like Keller, one day you feel like Fort Worth. It just depends. Exactly. But I like how you said that. Check what, what does your bin say when you roll it out on trash day? That is perfect. <laughs> and you know what? I should have because I've gotten since I've been working in the district, and I've learned so much from so many departments, including yours, on GIS and things like that. I've gotten so strict on my on my jurisdictions. 
Like when someone's like, oh, you live in Keller. No, I don't. I live in Fort Worth and I'm going to stand my ground on it. So now I know I can just take a picture of my trash can and just say, see, this is Fort Worth. Here it is. So, (laughs) but there's always um, a lot of those areas. It's that area big time because it's so booming up there, overpopulated, uh, I think. Well, maybe it just hasn't grown into its roads yet. It's the best way to We're, put it. <laughs> we haven't grown into our roads. There we go. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna put that on a shirt. Fort I like Earth. it. Have it grown into our roads. I like it. <laughs> That's why we keep building more. The yeah, the Keller area in particular in Hazlitt, yes. Hazel, or I mean, really the entire North Tarrant County. I mean, that population has exploded. Yeah. So there is a lot of confusion. That's where I would say a, a, a lot of our not one address questions come from. Oh, I believe it. Or in those it's areas. understandable. See, now I, I went ahead and got out of that confusion and packed my bags and moved south Fort Worth. <laughs> there you no go. longer a problem. I know I'm dead center in Fort Worth. <laughs> there you go. Now as long as you you'll find it more in the Crowley area, but where you're at oh i'm not you should be fine i'm i'm pretty i'm pretty golden there should be <laughs> not in that crowley burleson am i in johnson county thing so yeah we're good there but that's that's it that's good to talk about those jurisdictions too because i know the citizens always have wonderful questions for me when i'm out in the public about well i'm confused i live just south of everman but i had a call and the tarrant county sheriff's office showed up and everman police didn't show up you know there are pockets in tarrant county that are gonna be, what, unincorporated? Yes. And then that's when the sheriff's, sheriff's office, office will come out. Right, so the sheriff's office and the fire marshal's um, offices will take care of the emergency services at that point. So it's very possible to have a neighbor across the street having an entirely different set of responders. Yeah, this, and it's, that's something I like to really communicate with the citizens, because I can understand that confusion. I mean, if we didn't work in this industry, we would have no idea. I mean, if you live across the street from me and you got Fort Worth and I'm getting Tarrant County Sheriff's Office, I'd be like, do I get both? Mm-hmm. Is it just who's available? Do they high five each other and just decide who's going to go, draw straws? No, but it is. It's these pockets of, and I think a lot of that too is down, down in, the Everman area, but then there's also up by Eagle Mountain Lake. Yes, right is a big, is a big area because they have so many different houses that are going up there, and I think they're trying to annex everything. There's lots of annexation taking place in the north and west. Holy annex! Yes, big. <laughs> exactly. Next time you go to a meeting with any of the city, I want you to say "Holy annex," uh, and then just kind of see, just stop and see what happens, and then probably uh, quickly leave or pretend you have to go get a drink of water. <laughs> I just, you know, sometimes... I will make that happen. <laughs> sometimes you just need to just kind of throw people off guard on a meeting that might just be like, hey, let's light it up. <laughs> so, holy annex. I like it. The, yeah, so that's that's really interesting. Where do you foresee, or, you know, what you can share, the whole growing north and taking over Hazlitt and how much Fort Worth can... Fort Worth mm-hmm. itself, because, I mean, I know we have you know, other cities in this great county of ours. I know that. But Fort Worth just keeps almost like bleeding over into like going towards the Weatherford direction and going up north into Hazlitt. Where does that stop or how does how does that work? I don't know if that makes sense what I'm asking, but it does. Um and they they would go, you know, the pockets around Hazlitt, they can't actually take Hazlitt itself. Right. But yeah, they're going uh, northwest into that unincorporated area. Uh, they have what's called an extraterritorial jurisdiction, and that's where the kind of their right to annex. So okay. Fort Worth generally has, as I understand it, a five-mile buffer from their city limits. Uh-huh. So then, as they annex, that five miles keeps continuing to push out. Oh. You don't eat into the five miles. It's it's always five miles from that that border. Sneaky. So they are pushing up to the north, the northwest, and then yes, out in the. Uh, Parker County region with uh, Walsh Ranch development, then they're uh, doing a lot of annexations into Parker County right now to help build out that, that oh, okay. community. Gotcha. Yeah, because I was just out there this morning for a Safety Smart rally. Going out there, to, it was out nasal, so that makes that makes sense. And a, a lot of times too, when I tell people that, oh, when they when especially when they go to Texas Motor Speedway, 
Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, we're in Denton, right? And I'm like, no, this is this is actually still, to, this, right. this property is Fort Worth. The Texas Motor Speedway is covered by the city of Fort Worth, but then around it is, is that Denton still up there? Yeah, everything around it is Denton. Right. Because we don't have the Buckies. Actually, we do. Do we have the Buckies? We do. I can never remember. I knew that the T- the Texas Motor Speedway was like an island, and then I didn't know we had Buckies. I thought that was out of Tarrant yeah, County. I can check the exact line. There, there's still a couple pockets of unincorporated area there. I just want a Buckies under our belt. But I feel like the Buckies is. It's ours. Quote, unquote, ours. In our heart. It's it, it, and it's always ours in our heart. That's we just true. really want to provide 9 services to the Buckies, just to say we provide 9 service to the Buckies. Absolutely. If I can get some, uh, you know, complimentary uh, beaver nuggets beaver out of nuggets. that one. You know, those taste like corn pops. They really do. Do you remember the corn pops? Oh, here? I do. Do they even still make those anymore? Kellogg's corn they, pops? They do. Do they really? Yes. Oh, my gosh. I remember. You know what? I'm not even going to say what year I remember eating those, but they that's what beaver nuggets take. When I moved to Texas and I finally went to a Bucky's because I felt like that was my rite of passage. You had to. I was like, what is this Bucky's and what what happens? Like the cinnamon. Cinnamon beaver nuggets. Okay. I didn't. I, well, now I can't eat that stuff anymore. But when I had the, <laughs> the beaver nuggets, I was like, oh, my gosh, these are corn pops. Mm-hmm. Is the Kellogg's company aware of this? <laughs> no. They weren't before. <laughs> they weren't before, but now because of my TC91 podcast, I've now mm-hmm. created a, a brawl. <laughs> a the the shape is different. I'll, uh... The shape, shape is different. <laughs> That's interesting. Good time. So you just don't know what kind of conversations are going to come up in our fun little podcast here. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, that's awesome, Philip. Yeah, I, I love this information about it because jurisdiction is, it's it's such a broad topic, especially within the public itself, for them to understand how it works. And when people are super confused, because I remember being a dispatcher at, at North Richland Hills, and of course that dispatch for Watauga, Haltom, and Richland Hills. And what was it um, Beach Street? Anything west, uh, anything on Beach Street and west of Beach Street was Fort Worth. Anything on the other side, but not on the street, was Haltom City, except for the intersection of Northeast 28th Street. <laughs> I will take that to my, I'll take that to my grave. Because <laughs> like, if I well, remember anything from dispatching six, six and a half years ago, that is one thing I'll always remember. So it's just, there are areas that are like that, because... You know, with that being said, I mean, it's absolutely right, and location is important. And yeah, I, I know we push that as um, as an agency, but in my realm, in mapping, it's it means everything. And a description, you know, to the street or to the intersection is very different to me. I I, mm-hmm. I see it. Is it before this side? Is the right of way? Is right. it the easement? Is it the you know? There's just no Yours shortage is like of questions. More in depth, like you, because you guys do the maps. So, <laughs> if you haven't kind of placed all this together, Philip and his team put together the maps that are on our phone system, like the information and everything. But it's color coded for them, color coded for them, exactly like that. Like there's a different color right there. So that intersection that I just talked about, the 28th and Beach. It's it has its little pocket of the color for Haltom City, and with, so it's done very well. So good job, Philip. Thank you. And team. Yeah, we uh, <laughs> have a very good team here, and but yeah, it's because um, a lot of times we find that color coding the jurisdictions makes it it helps separate uh, for the call taker just what, what the different divisions are, different municipalities, mm-hmm. different responders, but. All in the same breath, it's easier to see that and reference it than it is to read. So you can visually see a, a different color and know that's Fort Worth. That's Fort Worth. Yellow. And so it, it is it's Fort Worth. <laughs> it's nice to have that. Um, I don't know, just a, a multiple level of identification for the call takers. Yeah, so. there's so much behind the scenes, and that's what you know. This is our first season of this. Is this is what my goal is that people can hear y'all here at the district and what you do and what goes behind the scenes and the mapping itself i mean that is well everything here is a big it's a big thing but it's like the mapping on the streets everything like it's just crazy and then you have some areas where the apartment complexes 
they don't have really city name street. Or they're, they're not recognized by the city, but they have them in their own apartment complex. Right. But they're not registered as actual, you know, you'll get your main apartment address. But then within that apartment, they're like, oh, I'm on bubblegum drive inside of my apartment and there is no such thing as bubblegum drive because <laughs> it's well one no one names their street that but the point that i'm That's making right. is that i have seen that where the apartment complexes have their own street name so do you want to elaborate that and why they do that and how that can how what can we do to <clears throat> help educate with it's a lot of times if they can work with their their city personnel to get those names you know identified you know, registered, you know, it would be great, but just to where if emergency services, if they're looking for Bubblegum Drive, then it, it really needs to have a name that we can then put into the map, but just not what anybody calls it, because otherwise people might just start naming their driveways. And right. that would kind of start leading to a little bit of a mapping chaos, if you will. That would so. be insane, but I would give my driveway mm -hmm. a super awesome. Actually, you know what? I would put, I'd just be like Abby Way. Oh wait, no. I think there Abbey is. Road, two. No, I think I got trademarked out of that. Yeah, yeah. I think you lost out on that one. It was, it was a good, good shot though. Dang it. <laughs> That's it. So, because I remember going to an event at an apartment complex last year, and there was the address of the apartment. So let's say it was twenty six hundred Airport Freeway was the apartments, and it was, you know, yeah, I, I don't know, Texan Apartments. Well, when I went in there, there were street signs within there. Mm -hmm. And I was like, whoa, you know, luckily I just had to go to the office, but I noticed different street signs, but I don't think that that was something that was right. and sometimes externally. They do, it in, do it in double or in, in multiple phases where they'll start naming them. Mm -hmm. And then eventually they may start pushing the building addresses you know, okay. off of that aside from the office. They'll yeah. keep the office address with that official and then start moving the building addresses okay. off of those internal streets. And so whenever that happens, uh, we do try to get those indoor mapping yeah, uh, just to be as reflective as possible. That's good. I mean, it's still a good thing to talk about, too, because, you know, folks that are listening at home that they're like, wait, I live in an apartment. Wait, I live in an apartment like that. You know, how do I know if that's registered through the, you know, if, if I say that my street name that they've given me inside the apartment complex is, can I work with 9-1? You can always call the non-emergency number and double check and just say, I want to know. And right. hence, stress, call the non-emergency number. <laughs> right. <laughs> so Absolutely. Please. Non. But the other thing it can be to check with the, uh, the apartment office, the management yeah. office, and see how they're referring to them or if they've differentiated those with 911. Right. If they're because, maybe in the process of it or maybe haven't started yet or something right. so because i can see that as a headache as a tenant like oh well you know even with deliveries with anything absolutely oh gosh i feel i would feel horrible so that's all good good chat so do you have anything else for us enlightening with gis any messages you'd like to pass along we did bring up the unincorporated versus the addressing yeah make sure you know your property address not just the the mailing address um and which is easy to find on your tax forms, and we're all far too familiar with those. Oh yeah, so it's that time of year. It is. <sighs> um, but really, that's that's the main thing. The message that we've really been trying to get out is clarification on the 911 address, and that there's, for our purposes, there's no such thing. So mm -hmm. just consult, you know, your addressing authority. And your tax statements, uh, and even look at your trash can if you need to. Yeah, look at your. That is. I'm going to walk away with this <laughs> from this chat of being true to my trash. I my, love tra it. Yep. my trash is true to Go me. Go trade, trademark that one. <laughs> Be true to your trash. Be true to your trash. Everyone's like, what's that mean? Well, it just verifies the city that I live in in case there's any debate on where I live. But now there's not. But in your area, still debate. I mean, my trash can says city of Fort Worth. So I'm... There you go. Again, and I gave you the tip that you could just take a picture of your trash receptacle and send it out to those who may doubt you. <laughs> <laughs> There's a picture of my trash. Yes, so, there you yep. go. 
Obviously. Well, thank you so much, Philip, for joining me today and taking time out of your busy schedule to have a good chat with me. This was really good information. Uh, jurisdiction is very important for everyone, not only us, but also the citizens at home to know where you're at, who's responding. And if you have any questions about that, you can always message us on social media or you can send me an email at publiced at tc911.org and we can answer any questions that you might have. That's what we're here for, right, Philip? Absolutely. We love the community. We love Tarrant County. We, we do. It's the best. So it is the best. Well, but, awesome. Uh, thank, thank you. Uh, yeah. yeah, I really appreciate it and enjoy this opportunity. Oh, well, thank you. And thank you everyone for listening. Be sure to join us every Monday for new podcast open uh, episodes, openings, episodes. It's a grand show. It is. TC91 Beyond the Call. We're on all of your great platforms of choice, Google, Apple, Spotify. You just name your platform and we'll be on there. So until next time, thanks again, Philip, and thank you all for listening. I hope that you have a fabulous week.